There was times this year where teammates were ahead of me and mentally before the race even started or midway through the race, I said, I can't beat them. And I want to change that starting with this track season. Hello everybody, welcome to a JK Running Productions video. Today's video, episode three of the Breaking Nine Project. Today we're gonna see where I'm at. Today we're gonna see how far away I am from breaking nine minutes in the 3K. We're gonna be doing this on my old high school track. I haven't ran here in like three years. It's gonna be sweet to be on the old track, old stomping grounds. Got my high school coach here. He helped me get on the track. He's gonna be taking timing, splits, everything like that. We'll see how this goes. I'm feeling pretty good. Had a good training block going into this sat and did nothing all day so the legs are primed and ready for this time trial with that though gonna get started in a few minutes check in after the race Let's go josh jk running productions That second half sucked. Several days later. So everybody, as you can see, I'm not at the high school anymore. I'm back in my dorm room actually at school. Classes are starting this week. And I wanna give you guys a few thoughts about the race before signing this video off. Overall guys, going into this time trial, my goal was to run 9.30 to 9.40ish. At the beginning of this indoor track season block, I ran 10.02 for a two mile time trial, but that was outdoors. I had perfect pacing from my teammates and everything was just put in place for me to run a really quick time and I did run a quick time. It was better than any of my cross country races, I would say this whole year. So because of that, that's why I said 930 to 940. I said I could run a PR indoors at my high school track. This track, like I said in the intro, it's a wooden gym floor, quite a lot more turns, different surface. I wouldn't be wearing spikes and also I wouldn't have any competition in this time trial. So with these expectations in mind, my mindset was to try and hold sub five pace as long as possible. And I did a decent job of that throughout the first half. I think my first three laps, I went 30.6, 30.4, 30.1. And then I stayed kind of right between that 30 to 31 range, I would say for the first eight laps. And then I really deteriorated that second half, which has been a problem for me for the past few years. Every time I've ran a 3K, just trying to stay mentally locked in for that last 1K has been the challenge for me. That's one I'm working on a practice right now. In the end, I ended up running 952. I don't think this result is necessarily a terrible result. I take some confidence away from that 952, but I still know there are a ton of variables that if they were in place, I could have ran much quicker. What actually ended up happening was we did in our workout this week, it was a 3K, 1K, 400. I ran the 3K and 10 seconds faster than what I did this time trial. And I actually ran 942. After that, I ran a 1K and 306. Then after I ran that 306, I did a 462. So I'm in good shape. I know that for a fact, even though I ran 952 in this time trial, 
and I'm excited to see what I'm going to do in this next meet. We have a meet this weekend. It's going to be 200 meter track, good competition, going to be wearing my on spikes, and I'm excited to see what I'm going to run. But with that, guys, though, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Strava. Join the JK Running Production Strava Club. With that, though, I'm going to sign off like I always do. The grind never stops. What do you want to say to YouTube? YouTube? Yep. Hi. No. Holden, if you're watching this, I need you to go do your eight minute abs right now. Uh, if you're not doing them, you're exposed. So I need to see a video proof. Upload it right now, YouTube, YouTube short.